Help me, help me, my wife. She's dead. Hurry. September 29, 2015. On a Tuesday Kelly Clayton aged 35 was at home in Elmira, New York, United States with her two children Charlie aged 7 and Cullen aged 3. They resided in a home on Jin Nan Road in Cotton Steuben County. Kelly was born and reared in Elmira but she moved in her 20s to seek a career as a model. Kelly quit her job as a teacher to become a cocktail server in Las Vegas. She had a wonderful experience, but after meeting Thomas Clayton, she returned to Elmira to begin a life with him. They married and had two children while he played hockey with the semi-professional Elmira Jackals. Thomas played with the Elmira Jackals for four seasons. He joined the Jackals as a forward immediately after graduating from Niagara University. In addition he founded Paul Davis Emergency Services of the Southern Tier of Fire and Water Damage Repair Company and subsequently served as project manager for SurfPro. That night September 28 Thomas participated in a poker game with his pals. He participated in a poker game every Monday evening. This night was no different. He left his home on Jin Nan Road in order to drive to the poker game at a friend's place. It was around a 10-minute trip. Thomas stayed till 12.20 a.m. and returned home. When Thomas entered the residence he discovered Kelly lying on the kitchen floor. She had been slain violently. Thomas dialed the 911 emergency number. Help me, help me, my wife. She's dead. Hurry. Or how long has she been down? I don't know, I don't know, I just got home. Kim Bourgeois, Kelly's sister and their mother were to the residence within an hour. Sarge, family coming. Yeah, here they come. You're gonna have to stop them. <laughs> I remember running to the ambulance expecting to find them working on my sister. And I'm like, is my sister in there? Where's my sister? Where's my sister? It was a horrific crime scene. There was blood everywhere and the evidence suggested that Kelly had been attacked in her bedroom. With the assault continuing down the hallway down the stairs and into the kitchen where her corpse was discovered, Kelly was fatally struck with a fiberglass mall handle. She passed away due to the blunt force damage she sustained. The children of Kelly were at home during the attack. Her seven-year-old daughter reported to the authorities that a burglar was in their home that night. She provided authorities with a frightening description of that night's events. She witnessed her mother being violently attacked and her mother begged her to go. Kelly's kid reported to authorities that a guy was assaulting her mother. She said that in the middle of the night a guy entered her home and struck her mother with a pipe-like object. She informed authorities that blood was everywhere including on her door and floor. She stated that the man chased her mother down the stairs as her mother yelled for her to flee. The assault continued below. I saw the robber like hitting her until she was on the ground. She was sort of suffering. Then I hugged her leg. The daughter of Kelly comforted her dying mother as she lay on the kitchen floor. Then she ascended the stairs to check on her younger brother. According to Kelly's daughter the suspect wore black trousers a long-sleeved shirt and a mask. The police questioned her whether the man was little or large. She informed them that he had the same height and eyes as her father. There were no indications of a forced entry or robbery. However, a family member who arrived at the site advised authorities to talk with Michael Beard. Michael was a former employee of one of Thomas's businesses who was terminated. Additionally Thomas was evicting him from the flat that he rented from him. The police inside the house however considered the incident to be the result of domestic violence and requested to speak with Thomas at the station. He had a domestic with her. She face planted. Yeah. Boom boom. Then he puts her on the kitchen. In her face you can see how her face is beat in. Husband. Husband. I was the only one at that time that could be a suspect. I felt he was lying to us. Police investigated Thomas's alibi and determined that he was present at the poker game that evening. People at the poker table and his GPS corroborated it. When authorities investigated Thomas's alibi further, Linda Miller, who had been at the poker game at the with phone, him, said like, that Thomas used her phone around past. 90 minutes before Kelly's death was discovered. 
Thomas erased the call but phone records revealed that he had contacted Michael Beard. Of Kelly Clayton, Niagara University graduate and former minor league hockey player Thomas Clayton is now accused of killing his wife in their home near Corning last week. And there's new information on this case tonight. Investigators now say it may be a case of murder for hire. And this man, 44-year-old Michael Beard of Elmira, has now been arrested and charged in connection with Kelly Clayton's death. 7 Eyewitness News reporter Rachel Elzevan here now with today's new developments. Well, Keith, Joanna, the district attorney is starting to paint a picture that this could have been a hit, but the defense attorney for Thomas Clayton says not only is his client innocent, but he was miles away playing poker during the murder. Prosecutors now think Thomas Clayton did not act alone. With the arrest of Michael Beard yesterday, law enforcement is now looking into this theory. The, the general information we have is this may be a murder for hire situation. Both Clayton and Beard are charged with second degree murder. They're being charged as accomplices, which means that they are acting in concert with each other. They both had the same intent to make this happen. Authorities say Kelly Clayton was killed last week at her home in Caton, just south of Corning. In the last few days, police have been searching other parts of Steuben and Shemung counties. Last week, Clayton pleaded not guilty to second degree murder. Prosecutors say they found evidence of blunt force trauma and the couple's children were home when Kelly was killed. There could still be more charges for the former Niagara University student and minor league hockey player for the Elmira Jackals. Mm -hmm. We have received uh, evidence that may well lead to charging murder one here, which is a, um, you know, it's a higher level felony. But during today's bail hearing, Clayton's defense attorney said on the night of the murder, his client's GPS shows he was miles away in Corning, playing poker with six friends. The GPS shows Clayton left Corning at 12.22 in the morning on Tuesday and arrived home at 12.35. Clayton's attorney claims when he came home, the lights were on, doors were open, and his wife dead inside. The 911 call made four minutes later at 12.39. In court, the defense attorney also painted Beard as a disgruntled former employee of Clayton who had been bothering him in the days before Kelly's killing. Thomas quadrupled Kelly's life insurance coverage just one year prior to his murder. It was currently valued at $1 million. Lease also revealed he was involved in many extramarital affairs and some of the women said he informed them that if he divorced Kelly, she would take everything from me. When authorities questioned Michael he revealed that Thomas paid him $10,000 to murder his wife. He directed investigators to the location of the murder weapon a mall handle. It was located in Southport on State Route 225. Michael also informed them that Thomas's house keys were in a stream in Elmira Heights and that the suitcase containing the clothing he wore that night was in Elmira. His confession was repeated to the grand jury. Thomas and Michael were charged with murder in the first degree. They had distinct trials. The trial of Michael came first. Michael pled not guilty during his trial despite having already confessed. There was more evidence tying him to the murder. The presence of physical evidence implicated him in the crime. He informed the authorities where they might locate the murder weapon the home keys and the clothes he wore the night of the murder. His DNA was on the garments discovered by investigators and they matched the description supplied by Kelly's daughter. The court heard that Michael used a key to enter the Clayton residence that evening. He entered via the garage and proceeded upstairs. Michael attacked Kelly in her bedroom while she slept while she was asleep. He attacked her twice with the mall's handle but she fought back and escaped the bedroom. She hurried towards the bedroom of her daughter at the end of the corridor. Kelly slid down the stairs while attempting to escape Michael and struck the landing wall. Kelly dashed through the dining area and into the kitchen. Michael however caught up to her and began pounding her with the mall's handle again. The blows were harsh and cruel and he struck her on the head and face with savagery. Michael was convicted guilty of first-degree murder and given a sentence of life without parole. The trial of Thomas was not as straightforward as the trial of Michael. In Michael's case there was direct proof tying him to the crime but in Thomas's case there was just circumstantial evidence. Thomas entered an alibi plea. The prosecution's position was that Thomas desired a divorce. He grew weary of his marriage to Kelly and engaged in many relationships and gambling. He desired the liberty to act as he wished. Their argument was that he paid Michael to murder Kelly in order to gain freedom and collect on the insurance coverage. He informed several of the ladies with whom he was having relationships that he was unable to divorce Kelly because she would take everything. Several of the women with whom the prosecution said Thomas had relationships testified throughout the trial. According to their testimony he made derogatory statements about Kelly to them. 
Thomas reportedly stated to Kelly's niece, This is going to be the last Christmas with me around and us being together as a family. Thomas was convicted guilty of first-degree murder and given a life sentence without the possibility of release. WENY News is breaking into programming to bring you breaking news out of Steuben County Court. A jury has found Thomas Clayton guilty of first and second degree murder for his role in the death of his wife Kelly in September of 2015. WENY's Logan Wilson joins us live from the courthouse in Bath with information on that verdict and what happened as the jurors announced their decision. We the verdict down minutes ago, Thomas Clayton guilty on both first degree and second degree murder charges. This is about after about six hours of jury deliberation. The jury began deliberating yesterday around 1040. They zoomed this morning at 930 and just shortly before 10 o'clock, they had a verdict. Now, many family and friends in the courtroom from both sides of this case were emotional when that verdict came down. Many of them just left the courtroom in tears. Now we're waiting to hear from both attorneys on more information as to whether or not Thomas Clayton was taken into custody as well as when sentencing. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the information we know right now, but stick with WNY News for the latest on this. He filed an appeal, but Thomas the appeals Clayton's court maintained his conviction. For his life sentence for the death of his wife, Kelly Sage Clayton, Shimon County District Attorney Weedon Wentmore, telling 18 News that there were no grounds for the appellate court to take up Clayton's latest appeal. The appellate court for the department upheld Clayton's first degree murder charge in August. Clayton is currently serving life in prison without parole. He was found guilty in February 2017 for hiring a former employee to kill his wife. Mark Blanford pled convicted to manslaughter in the second degree for his part. He said he was unaware of what would occur that evening. As part of a plea deal, he was sentenced to between three and six years in jail. In exchange for this, he testified against Thomas. <laughs> Thank you.